What appeared to be smoke was seen coming from the number three reactor this morning. An official of Tokyo Electric Power Company says white columns of steam are being released from the number three reactor. He says the company is now trying to determine what's happening. Utility firm says the vapor was coming from a storage pool for spent nuclear fuel, not from the reactor itself. This official says the company has injected water into reactor number one, two and three, but has not done so for the storage pools at all six reactors at the plant. He also says the white plume indicates the situation at number three reactor is getting worse. The plant operator said the storage pool at the number three reactor hasn't been cooled and coolant water is evaporating. If the coolant continues to evaporate, spent fuel would be exposed and overheat. Ground self-defense force dispatched a helicopter to prevent this from happening. But the helicopter returned without completing its mission because its crew members were exposed to a higher level of radiation than permitted. Flames were seen for about 30 minutes this morning at the number four reactor, where an explosion and a fire occurred yesterday. The National Police Agency has decided to use trucks to pour water on the reactor. A squad from Tokyo Police is scheduled to start, to start hosing the site later this evening. Tokyo Electric Power Company temporarily evacuated its employees after radiation levels suddenly rose near the main entrance of the nuclear plant. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency had this to say. This official says the agency believes that the radiation levels rose because of the trouble at the number two reactor. He says the suppression chamber at the reactor has been damaged. So the agency su suggested that radioactive substances have leaked from the reactor. The science ministry has released data on radiation levels within a 30 kilometer radius from the Fukushima Daiichi plant where people were told to evacuate or stay indoors. The highest level was 80 microsieverts per hour recorded at a location about 25 kilometers from the plant. The figure is a little higher than usual but does not immediately affect human health. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yuko Idano had this to say. He says the radiation levels do not affect people who work outdoors for a short period of time or stay in the area for several days. He also said he has heard that food and other supplies are not being delivered to areas outside of the evacuation zones. He calls on people not to overact so daily necessities can be delivered to those areas. So the serious situation continues. We are joined by, we, are, we have a model of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and we are joined by the University of Tokyo graduate school professor Koji Okamoto. And this is the f number four, number three reactors and number two and number one reactors. Today, we tried to drop water over number three reactor. The, its roof is blown away, and we tried to cool it down by pouring water from above. But the radiation level for the 
uh, self-defense forces crew to be exposed to will, uh, was much higher than expected, and this operation was called off. And for nuclear reactor number four, the outer walls have big holes due to fire and explosions. And as early as this evening or tomorrow morning, police will use water cannons to hose in water into number four reactor. And for number one reactor, the building is uh, damaged due to an explosion on Friday. And with the number two reactor, the damage was sustained on the suppression pool. So uh, four of the six reactors sustained damage at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Professor Koji Okamoto is joining us, and he's an expert in uh, atomic energy. Today we saw an attempt to put in water over the facility from above. That was today's focus. What is the intention of uh, pouring water in? Today, we were not trying to spray water over the entire facility, but we tried to do something about this number three reactor. There is a storage pool for spent fuel, and this is where the spent fuel is stored, and this is the fuel rods, these are fuel rods inside the reactor. They are stopped, pulled out of the reactor, the, and they must be cooled down. And this spent fuel was the, the fuel that was used before and stored in the same building. And it may appear that there isn't much water, but this is a 12-meter deep pool, and there's a lot of water. But it appears now that the water level is coming down, and much of the spent fuel roads are exposed, and the temperature is rising. And the South Wind's forces tried to pour water in here from above today, since the roof is destroyed, so they tried to pour water in here. Yes, that roof has been blown away, so they tried to pour water in from above. What does it mean that we couldn't pour in water today? Well, we need to cool it down as, mu as soon as possible. Well, it's the same as the core of the reactor. The, we are trying to prevent the decay of the material that was generated after the nuclear fission. So, and to do so, we need to pour the fuel rods in the water. And this fuel was used much long time ago. So it is not releasing much heat. However, it is releasing heat. So unless it is cooled down, it will warm up. For example, when you are um, putting your kettle on the stove, even when you put it on a very small fire, it will heat up eventually. So when the temperature goes up, the nuclear material will uh, melt. Well, we do not know how much, uh, how hot it gets, but it is possible that the high heat can destroy this, the surface of the fuel rods and uh, cause decay. So the pouring in water in this pool is very effective. That's correct. So by pulling, pouring in water, we can prevent this from happening. So we can prevent the uh, release of gamma ray because of the uh, when, when the water is pulled in. That's right. 
as long as the water is full in this pool, we can stop the release of gamma ray. So, so it is very important that the pool is full of water. But we gave up the idea of doing so from above. And is it going to be continue to be difficult to, to do so tomorrow? That's right. If it was difficult today, there is no guarantee that it is going to be done tomorrow or later. So now they are considering to use water cannons. And we have the information that the uh, Metropolitan Police's mobile uh, police unit has been mobilized to do this operation. That's right. They are going to hose water into the pool from a remote point. Now let's move to number four reactor. Yesterday we were surprised that the pool for spent fuel warmed up to cause an explosion and this is the photo of taken yesterday. Yes, we can see the damage. And this building we can we have more photos, more more data concerning this, the status of this building. On the left is number four reactor. And this photo shows us that this photo was taken from the seaside. That's right. Well, actually, it's taken from a high, uh, very high altitude. And you can see that there is almost no wall on this side. We just talked about the watering of the number three reactor, and we will need to do the same for number four reactor. That's right. The spent fuel pool of number four reactor is the only place in this uh, building where fuel rods are, because the, the core doesn't have any fuel rods in right now. So this place has to be cooled down as well. Now another problem, number Apple two Ireland. reactor. To your Yesterday, Bruce, what had the new roof paid for in no time? How did you do it? Frank's red hot sauce. We heard about the damage of the suppression pool. Well, it is said that it is believe uh, it is it may have been damaged, and the radiation level around the facility went up yesterday, and. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says that it is because this suppression pool was damaged. It is very difficult to identify where is the source of high level, higher level of radiation, but we can assume that some kind of uh, Radi radioactive material contained in the User, steam Dr. coming out of the suppression pool Okama. is the cause of the higher level of radiation measured around the facility. That is one possibility. And we do not have more information about this. No. We continue to hear that the uh, this facility is, going, is being cooled down. And the efforts have continued. And the people involved are using their wisdom to get out of this problem. But what can we do more, do more to do, address the situation? To cool them down is the only thing that we can do. And we have lots of fuel wa uh, seawater and that are used to cool down these facilities. And the uh, reactor cores are being cooled by the seawater pumped in, and they are working. And we will use water uh, cannons or the spraying of water from above to cool down the spent fuel pools, pools of number three and number two reactors. Let me double check this point. Many people are reminded of Chernobyl incident. That was a criticality incident. The 
that that triggered the chain reaction of nuclear fission. And this, what we are seeing now is completely different. That's correct. Our problem now is that we cannot cool these facilities down. We do not have any nuclear fission going on. And we are, we have, we are having trouble taking the small amount of heat that is created because of the process of decay. The situation remains extremely serious at the Daiichi power plant. The most important thing to do to stop the situation getting any worse is injecting water into the reactors. The work has been extremely difficult. Speaking on Saturday, Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano says the government will take the unprecedented step of filling the reactor containers with seawater. The cooling systems for the plant's number one, two, and three reactors have all failed. That has caused some of their fuel rods to start melting. The work to fill the reactors with seawater is underway as an emergency measure, but it has been made difficult by high levels of radiation. Work under high levels of radiation was carried out in 1999 following a criticality accident at a fuel processing plant in Tokai Village, north of Tokyo. Workers were allowed to do the job only for a few minutes to limit their exposure to radiation. Kenji Sumita, a member of the Nuclear Safety Commission, took charge of the operation. He says the most important thing is to minimize radiation exposure. Sumita says workers would go in and turn a valve which had been specified to them and then go out. He says they would work on their own or in teams of two, with one of them watching over the work of the other. He says workers going into the most hazardous places would stay there just for a minute and go out. The work continuing at the Daiichi plant involves injecting seawater through a pipe that is connected from outside to a reactor pipe which leads to the pressurized container. The work is being done by one pump each at the number one and three reactors and two pumps at the number two reactor. But the work to inject seawater...